God bless you. I want to thank you for joining me today for another time of word inspiration in Richmond. Now, I, I want to ask you, do you really understand the power of these two words? I am. Do you understand the power that comes with those two words? I am. Do you understand that those two words are not just words or phrases or a phrase put together, but they, that they are someone's name. And when those two words are used, they are actually speaking that there is a presence among us. Well, I want to talk about those two words specific to how we use them in phrase but in the context of a prayer, matter of fact, you may know that I published a recent book entitled Predictably Productive Prayer. And one of the things in this book, not only are we talking about prayer from the perspective of what prayer is meant to be, what prayer is, how we should pray, who should pray, when should we pray, what we should pray, but I go into what predictably productive prayer is and predictably productive prayer is a perspective, but it's also a process. And so I want to talk starting today over the next uh, number of weeks about predictably productive prayer in the process aspect. And there are four layers to this process. The first is that there is a declaration statement okay but then there's more that comes with it and we'll go into that in just a moment i want to go ahead and pray for our time together and then we will jump into this message our father we give you thanks and praise pray that you would be in us for this moment that your thoughts your speech your actions be in our thoughts our speech our actions Bless our hearing, bless our receiving, bless our believing, bless our doing, bless our delivering to the praise of your glory, to the benefit that comes with it for us. We give you thanks in Christ Jesus. Amen. All right. So. Where should I start? Here's where we've talked about. The reality of the name I am and some other aspects, but I want to go into Genesis 1 and 26. And in going into Genesis 1 and 26, I want to bring to your mind the words of Jesus and his teaching on prayer in Matthew 6, where he says, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name actually means to not take his name in vain, right? And in not taking his name in vain, to hallow it also then means to make use of his name appropriately. Avail yourself of the power of his name rather than be brought under the condemnation and force of his name, but also don't use his name in a way that is not profitable to you. Going back to what is his name, that name, the sacred name of God is I am that I am. So the two words I am, they're not just two words. Those two words are actually God's name, which means in the true context of what a name is, it is his identity. You go back into the Old Testament, you see that names were given for the purpose of those names identifying not only who that person was, but their character, identifying their life, identifying their purpose. To give you a perfect example. Uh, Abram, his name as Abram meant high father, but his name was actually a source of his pain and shame because he had no children. Mm. And then God changes his name to Abraham, which corresponds to being a father of many in, in respects. There's, there's more depth to it. But 
a father in a more unique way than being high father. <laughs> and he still had no children when the name was changed. Now, the Lord then blessed his seed, blessed the producing, but the point that I'm trying to make is the name described not just who a person was, but what their purpose was, what their power was, what their identity was for God. It's not just what his purpose is. It's who he is and everything that is good is a reflection of the fact that it comes out of him. Oh, that's another statement, but another perspective in and of itself. But moving to the next thing. So let's go to Genesis 1 and 26. Um, we see, then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over the livestock stock and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Wow, very expansive. Main focus that I want to take real quick is let us make man in our image after our likeness. In our image means that by default we look like God. After our image or after our likeness actually means that in order for mankind to be in the likeness of God, God would have to be in mankind. Because the after speaks to subordinates, speaks to submission, speaks to the expectation for there to be a flow from above down beneath, right? A flow from the authority to the submitted, submitted one. A flow from the one who leads to the one who follows. Mm. Now, here's where we get into the prayer. Let me give it to you as an example. I am peace. Now, let's ask this question. Are you peace? Is Leo peace? Oh, no. Le Leo is Leo or Leonard Earl Simpson II, you know, or the names that people may call him. But Leo is not peace. Leo can have peace. Leo can have peace in him. But God is peace. Even the scripture tells us that God is light, that God is love. Huh? Which means that Light is really a reflection of him. It's just like my daughters are a reflection of me, but they're also not me. Light is him. Good is him. Love is him. Peace is him. So when we say I am peace, important is that it's not about us. Here's the other portions of the prayer, and then I'll come back to this first layer. I am peace is I am peace. And we'll we'll go through each one of these over the next few weeks. So, you know what it is that these me. I am peace is I am peace. Yes. I receive. Woo. Let I am peace be in me. Whew. What a beautiful prayer in this sense. I know the Lord answered that prayer. The reason the Lord answered that prayer, because he said he would hold no good thing from us, especially those who walk upright before him. Even Jesus said that whatever you ask in prayer, know that you shall receive it and that the Lord, the father will give it to you because he's pleased to do so. Here's the thing, though. Jesus said, if you ask anything, what, according to to my will in my name well is it god's will that we have his peace absolutely guess what prayer answered now the manifestation of it is different but the reality of having received it and it being released from god is absolute we'll come back to it though i am peace what is the power of that it is the engagement of our pride and the positioning of our humility and worship at the same time. The, the humility and worship really is activated at the next layer, which we'll talk about next time. But that first one, it engages our pride and positions us to acknowledge that there's one greater than who we are. But it is one 
powerful thing more than anything else. It lets it be known that we are in his image because we do have the authority because of the intellectual and intelligent capacity of words to convey those two words, I am, as some representation of us. But it's important that we do not take those name, that, that name in vain, those two words in vain, because if we use them inappropriately, we put a stain, a stamp, and a brand on our subconscious to the degree that we can disrupt the continuity of connection with God. When we say I am peace, we are engaging our pride to know that we say things a lot of times connected with I am that not necessarily are true to I am. But when we say it in this form, in the commitment to pray, we are positioning ourselves to acknowledge that that is pride. But we are positioning ourselves for humility and worship that we might see the power of I am peace in us. What we're saying when we say I am peace, we're saying that I am peace. It's like saying Leo Simpson or Leonard Earl. This, this is a part of my identity. This is a part of my name. This is not just something that describes me. Peace is a part of him. Peace flows out of him. So he says, I am that I am. That means he is peace. I am peace. And if I am peace, it's who he is. Then for us to declare beauty of his nature, is a most precious privilege in and of itself. Now you can use many of the other attributes that we describe God, but you got to understand those attributes are what they are because God is who he is. <laughs> Come on now. So you cannot just have peace, but you can be peace when peace be in you. Yes. You can have peace. Yes. But when you be peace, the idea is that when something is a part of your being, it flows out of your being. It is what you are being. Huh? It is who you are being. And when God's being is being in you, you are able to be being in the earth. Let your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Meaning, let the intelligence, let the, watch this intellect let the words in constructive beauty that are in the mind of god be in us not just to be there and be present but they be as functional and working as they are in the mind of god i am peace peace is not just a description of god peace is who god is and peace it's not just one of the things or one of the aspects that God is. God is good. God is all of the goodness and the glory of this existence. And to declare I am in just one of his unique functions, but to do so with many of them in the context and course of this predictably productive prayer is such a unique blessing and privilege. So what I want you to know is you're going to look like God. I look like God. We have his image, which means we are intellectual and intelligent creatures. Even uh, if you go back and do some study on the name Adam or Adam in, in the Hebrew it was three letters, right? I think it was Olive Dolph Mim, right? The Olive Dolph Mim, when you do some study on that, you find that what it really means is God-like creature with flesh and blood. And what makes us a God-like creature with flesh and blood, but more so what makes us a God-like creature is that we have intellectual and intelligent capacity with words, which is why in the context of prayer, prayer is pr provision, receiving connection, to connect with God, to receive from God, the provision from God. Uh -huh. But we do so through what? Coming face to face before God. It takes intention and thoughtfulness to come and look for the face of God. Have vision for the face of God. To present, be presented and present before the face of God. To request in words. 
to receive provision, to be released in work that produces to the glory of God and to our benefit. That is a magnificent beauty. And so, I'll close. I am is the most powerful two words that we can use. But do we use them to describe us, our limitations, and our circumstances or experiences? Or do we use them to hollow the name of God and avail ourselves of the power of his identity, his image, but more so his likeness being in us? I pray that it's the second, for if it is, we will predictively, productively pray in such a way that it will transform our lives and others. Let's pray. Our Father, be in us as you are being in eternity. And let the eternal being have power and authority in the earth through our efforts, through our energy. Be in us that you might be in the earth as a result of us. In Christ Jesus, we pray. Thank God. Amen. All right, you go. Let I am that I am be I am that I am in you. And be blessed to be a blessing. Take care.